is 7.43. We've grown eight out of the last nine quarters. Not bad. We've got interest rates at a 45-year low. Not bad. Unemployment starting to fall. Not too bad. We're likely to create 170,000 jobs in the next four years. We've reformed the RMA. And by the way, we're on track to win the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, state of it's uh, replacing um, what we used to um, do over the last few weeks, which of course was um, Eye on the World. Sal and Manning from stuff.co.nz with state of it looking at uh, New Zealand politics in the lead up to the 2011 election. Hello to you, Selwyn. Yeah, hi, Glenn. Uh, from scoop.co.nz, uh, I think stuff won't have me. <laughs> oh, crikey, Dick, where did that come from? I'm on, I'm on automatic pilot this morning. That's a little bit embarrassing. Automatic, that's all good. Really <laughs> uh, all right, um, let's get straight on into it. Um, yeah, looking at, um, at some of the uh, some of the goings on over the past week, uh, particularly with um, the, of course, the uh, double downgrades. Yeah, that's right. Now, um, as you alluded to in the intro there, Glenn, um, there's been this dramatic display of inconsistencies that has been demonstrated by the Prime Minister and those in the beehive, really, over the last past week. Um, so much so that in some quarters, I'm arguing that it's become almost a, an issue of public interest. Um, we saw a glimpse of this problem in that introduction that just came through, but it all began on Tuesday last week. And it really started when Labor's finance spokesperson, David Cunliffe, uh, asked the Prime Minister during Parliament's question time, is it policy to muddle through the current economic uncertainty? Now, the Prime Minister, John Key, he replied, no, the government has actively taken a number of steps to ensure New Zealand can minimise any fallout from global economic events. Now, that all sounded particularly convincing, and certainly the Prime Minister did give a very good performance in the House, showing that uh, you know every indication that the government was right on target for meeting some of its promises. Um, it's, it was especially uh, convincing when the Prime Minister began to enjoy himself, as we saw in the introduction, detailing the positive outcomes that the national-led government had supposed supposedly achieved in recent times. And let's just have a re-look at that, Glenn, um, and leading in with the question from, uh, from David Cunliffe. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Why is the Prime Minister content to roar about the success of the Rugby World Cup and the record dairy payout outside the chamber, but barely able to squeak about the performance of his government because it's all someone else's fault, like the global recession or previous governments when he gets into the chamber? The right on the Prime Minister. Mr. This, this Speaker, I was actually slightly conscious that I was roaring inside the chamber, but for the purposes of let's go through it one more time. We've grown eight out of the last nine quarters. Not bad. We've got interest rates at a 45 year low. Not bad. Unemployment starting to fall. Not too bad. We're likely to create 170,000 jobs in the next four years. We've reformed the RMA. And by the way, we're on track to win the Rugby World Order. Cup. Order. 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 It's enough. <laughs> that is quite enough, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is, certainly is. Um, like we could see there, the Speaker Lockwood Smith calling it all into order and saying that's enough. Um, if we were to take the Prime Minister at his word there, then the economy must be heading in the right direction. Uh, certainly the Prime Minister was upbeat, positive. We saw that. We heard that just then. Um, that's what his government was all about. Are you saying it was on track? Um, Treasury projections as presented in the 2011 May budget, he was indicating that they were on track also to meet the uh, promised 170,000 new jobs in a few years time. Well, Glenn, that was Tuesday. Within 24 hours in an interview with Radio Live, the uh, Finance Minister, Bill English, he was far more cautious. And we've got a bit of a uh, clip there of this as well, Glenn. Bill English is just back from a meeting of finance ministers in Washington. The costs of having uh, financial contagion there and a loss of confidence in the banking system would be enormous. So I'm um, hopeful rather than confident that uh, one way or another, they'll muddle their way through to some solutions. One economist thinks the Prime Minister's view may be coloured by the upcoming election. The fact of the matter is, if there is a global downturn, New Zealand will be affected. Um, during the global financial crisis, we lost something like 37,000 manufacturing jobs. 
Labour, of course, isn't so polite. This government has lived off uh, $18 billion worth of borrowing this year. You can't keep doing that. So you need to broaden your tax base, and that's what a capital gains tax is about. It sounds like, um, you know, uh, Bill and uh, John not singing from the same sh- song sheet there. Yeah, that's exactly what Duncan Garner kind of came to um, within, you know, in his, his summary uh, after an interview with uh, Bill English. We'll just come to that in a minute. But remember that all of this examination of how the economy is actually not meeting those targets is actually under a lot of pressure. It came within 24 hours of the Prime Minister in Parliament saying that they were skating along into, uh, you know, meeting all of their performance targets here. Now, Let's let's have a look at this extended interview. Uh, this uh, you know, just a segment of it uh, between um, three news political editor Duncan Garner um, and Bill English, um, and this is this is in, indicating you know this is really looking, Glenn, at uh, Bill English uh, responding to whether or not the government will meet 170,000 new jobs, um, as the prime minister said they were well on track to do mean that we may not create the 170,000 jobs that your budget talked about? I'm well, still pretty optimistic about the job creation. Uh, it's really a matter of whether we're going to get more, more than that or not. Uh, if things turn really bad in Europe and the US, uh, that'll be another headwind. Which means that we may not get those numbers? Well, let's see. I mean, we're, we're pretty focused on the conditions that will allow new investment and new jobs in New Zealand. Uh, the Christchurch rebuild is certainly going to help with that. Uh, we can't control international events, but yes, it could get harder. But we're not immune? No, we're not immune from these international events. We're borrowing in those financial markets every week. Uh, we've got a lot of debt. Uh, we're well positioned, but if the seas get really rough, that will be hard for us. Finance Minister Bill English, they're talking to Duncan Garner. Yeah, no, that's right. Now, so what we're seeing here is really um, the Finance Minister uh, trying to caution things down. He's trying to settle things down. Um, in some ways, he's trying to not uh, kind of get offside with his prime minister there, John Key, but he's trying just to massage things into the real uh, the, the realm of realism here. Um, now, if we just jump down a little bit here and start to actually go uh, into um, a couple of days later. Now, this is Thursday, and this is back in Parliament again. And later that afternoon on Thursday, the Labour leader, Phil Goff, began to dissect John Key's claims in Parliament that the economy was so sailing along well, um, despite this looming double dip uh, recession that's threatening the global economy. And there's a little bit of a segment here, Glenn. In terms of building a brighter future, let me, uh, for the edification of the member, give him this. That is a graph from the Treasury, made up by someone, but from the Treasury. This is a sign of GDP growth around the world. This is Australia. This is New Zealand above pretty much every country in the world. So on the backdrop of a global financial crisis, three major earthquakes in Christchurch, a more significant event has not occurred as a percentage of GDP in any any natural disaster in New Zealand, in the world, should I say. New Zealand has grown faster than the United States since this government's been in office, faster than the Eurozone since this government's been in office, faster than the UK since this government's been in office, faster than Japan since this government's in office. Mr Speaker, relative to pretty much everyone else, it is a brighter future. Talking about uh, confusing stats there, really, Selwyn. Yeah, it is, you know, and so in, right through that time in the House and the Prime Minister once again going back to this optimistic, positive spin on the whole uh, state of the New Zealand economy and where we're positioned, um, Bill English sitting right next to him looking pretty uncomfortable in some t- at some points and certainly looking indifferent to, uh, to the way things are going there. Certainly by Friday... Um, you know, um, the, uh, the, the, the thing got worse for the government in this sense. This sense. Um, the international credit rating agencies, of course, Twitch and Standard & Poor's downgraded the New Zealand credit rating from double AA, uh, AA plus to double A. Now, this is another clip here with Three News reporter Patrick Gower and how he reported it. Uh, and this is interesting to show, too, that this is once again the Prime Minister, perhaps outside of the House, slightly less optimistic but addressing um, this issue, Glenn. 
And a double downgrade, of course, means damage control. It's apparently the global economy, not the government. Obviously, you know, a stronger credit rating is better than a weaker one. And weaker it is. The credit agency's concerns are all about debt. $140.2 billion, that's what the government and the private sector owe combined. That's, that's Patrick Gower's report. And then again, uh, once again, we had the Prime Minister leaving for Sydney um, from Auckland um, to watch an NRL Rugby League Grand Finals game. Um, so the Finance Minister once again was put out there in front of the public, um, compelled to send a particularly direct message to the public um, to help uh, avert any significant downturn or the perception of it. But anyway, here's the clip uh, from the, Prime, uh, from the um, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Bill English. Bill English says right now the credit agencies just don't like debt and while he reckons the government's doing OK, you can do more at home. We're asking households to do a couple of things at once, uh, pay off their debt uh, and increase their savings. The downgrade means our economy is viewed as more of a risk. Our banks will have to pay more when they borrow from offshore. That cost will of course be passed on to you in higher mortgage rates. It really is um, good cop, bad cop, uh, isn't it? <laughs> it is, you know, it comes down to that. Despite the Prime Minister's strategy to positively spin this whole thing, Glenn, irrespective of how dire it is out there in the economic stakes, um, this past week it could only be described really in normal situation as a week from hell for the national-led government. But as we know, a new cycle is particularly short-lived and the polls do not indicate that voters are really having to notice all of this type of goings-on. But certainly, if any press gallery journalists were intent on asking the Prime Minister more questions on his take on the New Zealand economy, well, they were going to be disappointed. And you might ask why. Well, the answer is simple, because the Prime Minister did not hold his usual post-Cabinet press conference as he, you know, on the Mondays as he decided to stay in Sydney a little bit longer. Um, he enjoyed a long weekend, returned home to New Zealand late on Monday afternoon, so he didn't even appear to... He didn't even attend Cabinet. Now, what's the state of that? You know, you've got to ask that. This is... A, right on the back of a week where the economy is really getting picked through um, and there are different messages coming out from between the Prime Minister and his Deputy Prime Minister, Finance Minister, and he's not even there at Cabinet to kind of front up on these things. In my view, especially this close to an election, a Prime Minister should make himself available as often as possible to the media so that the voting public can evaluate the government's performance and vote in a manner that displays informed choice. Now, we're not getting that opportunity here to refuse to front up to the media on these things. We're rather intending uh, some sort of rugby league game. Um, it's to refuse, and also, you know, refusing, as we understand, the Prime Minister's refusals to take on board Three News' invitations for him to appear on the Nation Current Affairs programme on these kind of matters. Um, to not attend Cabinet, as we mentioned, it's an abuse of the responsibilities and it becomes, you know, if this trend continues, a matter of public interest, Glenn. And that is the state of it. Thanks very much, Salwan Manning. Okay, Glenn. Take care. Scoop.co.nz, of course, is where you, see, you go to um, see all the show notes from this as well, all the links and uh, the video of this as well.